Welcome from the deep, my Mike Finder. And I am Book of Brett. And today we are going to be talking about the 2024 film Cuckoo. Cuckoo! This is a movie that I have had on my watch list all year. This is one that yes. I was looking forward to all year. I had seen the trailer for this months and months ago, and I was super stoked about this, Maxine, Nosferatu, Long Legs, In a Violent Nature. All these movies have been on my list, and Cuckoo has been right up at the top there because I think the trailer was really strong. This has a yeah. really, really strong trailer. Did you know anything about this going into it? No. No, I did that on purpose. Yeah. Um, because this Same. seemed like, it was kind of like with Long Legs, uh, which was also produced by Neon. Yeah. I went into Long Legs completely blind, and it was a welcome surprise. I went into Cuckoo as blind as I could, having seen the trailer, until I realized that almost every scary moment in the movie is in the trailer. As is tradition for fucking newer horror movies, it seems. I do not understand this necessity to put the only scary moments in your movie, in your trailer. It ruined multiple scary moments in this movie because I knew it was coming. Yeah. And it's why I try not to watch trailers, but you can't always do that, especially when you go to the theaters uh, and you're just trapped in a room where they show you trailers for fucking half an hour. So, well, I think uh, I, I think a big part of it is a uh, story is scary, Mike. So you got to pull people in with the scares in the trailer. Yeah, I mean, like, I, look, look, <laughs> look, 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 like we got a story. Well, we put some scary shit in there, too. Well, do you feel like the trailer is even a good representation of what this movie is? No. No, not even a little bit. Not, right? Because it felt no, like from the trailer, it felt like much more of a a hardcore horror movie than the movie actually feels. And and when we yes. were watching it, you even said this is more like a thriller. Yeah. And then we proceeded to count the amount of scary moments. Right. Which I think we got to five or six. I, yeah. I also want to point this out. We have now both watched this twice. This is a movie that actually does kind of get a little bit better with a second viewing. I liked it the second time around more than I liked it the first time. A second viewing really helped this movie a lot. Just being able to pick it apart cinematically, it helped a yeah. lot rewatching this movie because it helped me focus on the stuff I was not focused on the first time around. Yeah, I, I also think a big part of that too is picking up on things that may like little cues here and there. Yes. That you uh, that you may not pick up on on the first try. Yeah. Um, however, I will say my, my my feelings for the movie did not change. Maybe the severity of those opinions changed a little bit. Um, but overall, I will say upon a second viewing, I think I was also probably paying more attention than you were the first time because my opinion of this 100%. movie did not change very much. On the, up, upon a second viewing. I don't know. It didn't go up that much, but I do feel like I liked it more. But the, but we were also kind of bullshitting and kind of, you know, we watched it in a very social. Thanks, Jonah. We watched it in a very social situation the first time around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was m a little more complicated to pay attention to it. But uh, either way, why don't we just get into this? If you want to give us a synopsis for Cuckoo for 2024, we will get, then get into our review. We'll talk spoilers after we give you our initial impressions. We'll give you a heads up before we do that. And then we will give ratings and we will get out of here. But why don't you give me a synopsis first? Cuckoo is about a family who goes to stay at a Bavarian resort because the dad is, I guess, an architect. And then we find out out that some really weird people are doing some really weird stuff to some really unwitting people. You're such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Why? All right, well, I mean, let's go ahead and see what IMDb has to say. Cuckoo from 2024, rated it's R. It's wrong. It's an Mine's hour and 42 minutes. And the one sentence synopsis is a 17 year old girl is forced to move in with her family to a resort where things are not what they seem. That is basically what I just said. It is, actually. It's shockingly close to what you just said. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the, so. the, 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 qu the sooner you acknowledge, <laughs> accept, and embrace my genius, oh, the happier just, we're all going to be. It's just never going to happen. But So this is directed and written by Tillman Singer, who, admittedly, I don't, I don't know. And when I looked at his directing credits he has four directing credits to his name so he has two shorts and two full actual length 
movies. So this is technically his second movie, which is actually kind of insane how much hype and yeah. Um, yeah. just like buzz that he was able to generate with this movie. Yeah, um, well, if you look at the reviews, a lot of them are inaccurate. I saw one that called this a body horror movie. Get the fuck out of here. This isn't a body yeah, horror movie. No, they need it's to go out. barely a horror movie. Yeah. Um, it stars Hunter Schaefer, Jane Bluffhart, and Martin... I'm not even going to pronounce that. Um, here's the thing. Short. Here, yeah, Martin Short. Here's the thing. This is Hunter, Hunter Schaefer's uh, debut in, as far as this show goes. Uh, Hunter Schaefer is not somebody I'm overly familiar with. And when we look at her credits, Kinds of Kindness, Cuckoo, The Hunger Games, which is that the new Hunger Games that came out last year. I mean, I just don't know anything Freedom. about Hunter Schaefer at all. So this is like the first time I've actually seen her in anything. And I got to say, yeah. pretty good actress. Like, yeah, she like kind of carries this movie the entire time and does a pretty damn good job, like a shockingly well, good job for how little God she experience does. she has. Thank God she does, because everybody in this movie is so fucking <sighs> unlikable. That does seem to be the running theme in this, especially for you. You just you really didn't like her either. I didn't like anybody in this movie. Um, And we talked about this. Um, One of the biggest problems I have with her is her emotional instability. But then I have to look back on what a monumental wreck of a human being I was when I was a teenager. And I have to go, yeah, that seems about right. Yeah. That's how you know that this was actually written in a very like realistic way, as far as what a teenager yeah. would, would yeah. say and but, think. But overall, my, my issues with her were just like these, uh, they, these actions and uh, decisions that seems so, I don't know, naive. And I know, again, I know she's 17. She's a child, yeah. I, 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 and I do get that. But like the first inkling I got of her level of naivete is when she's riding her bike down a dark forest <laughs> road with headphones on. Yeah. Come on. I mean, that's definitely like, something, especially like, in a place that you don't know very well, that is not yeah, a very good dude. idea. You've never ridden your bike at night. Like, even in if that, you don't in that have, area. So it does seem like a very dumbass thing to do. Even if your mom and dad never instilled that lesson of be aware of your surroundings in you, I feel like the level of paranoia you would feel would be enough for being like, yeah, I should probably put this in my backpack. Yeah, well, and and that was actually the scene. Uh, we're going to try, like I said, we're going to try to not spoil anything, but that is the scene yep. from the trailer specifically that I was talking about, the yeah. scene on the bike. where It's the, the scene that made me go, oh, shit, yeah. okay. And you see, like I said, I, I don't think this is even spoiling anything because it's in the fucking trailer and she's getting chased by yep. somebody on a bike but doesn't realize it because, like he said, she's got headphones on and it's just... It does speak to a greater thing, a problem with her character, just in a way that like she doesn't fully think through the things that she does. But also, right. like you said, being 17, you do not make great decisions and you're right. mainly fueled by hormones. And, and, and everybody's anger. awful so, until 25. So I mean, that's pretty not much. Really I mean, fault. yeah, like 15 to like 22, at least people are just yeah. terrible. Um, yeah, you're 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 just operating on hormones and social pressure and come from like 15 yeah. to 22. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't you go ahead and give me your overall impressions on uh, Cuckoo? I'm going to do that by reading my letterbox review, because a I think it sums up my this, by the way, feelings on this sorry, movie. This this has uh, been nominated for a bunch of stuff. It's got one win and five nominations. I just wanted to point that out. This is a. Uh, a lot of people do really dig this movie, even though it only has a six out of 10 on IMDb, which is a little weird it's, to me. It's uh, yeah. Six out of 10 is a little weird, low, but six out of 10 is a little low. However, this movie brings nothing new to the genre. So I don't. So that's so fair. No, I, I don't understand why it's being nominated for a bunch of awards. I'm starting to think hype is what you need to win awards nowadays. Because that's really what it's starting to feel like. So, Cuckoo, 2024. Here is my letterbox review. Between the trailers and the hype, this seemed like a surreal horror that would be a mind fuck and adrenaline rush. It was definitely the former, but I don't think in the way it was intending. It does surrealism exceptionally well. 
which it does. And I still believe that. And the performances of the actors truly are stellar. I still believe that. But it's all for naught as lying upon a fruitful soil begging to grow to unknown heights is a layer of fertilizer without any of the nutrients required to carry this into a satisfying and enthralling ending. Instead, we're fed what feels like a climax written out of desperation that the writers felt that the writers felt to get them out of the corner they found themselves in. What could be chalked up to naive or ignorant decision making devolves into characters making every seemingly bad choice they possibly can and a slew of what the fucks that I refuse to take back. Was it awful? No. Am I glad I watched it in the comfort of my own home and underwear? Fuck yes. And I still think that sums up pretty much my vibe or, or my, my my feelings on this movie in general. This is one of the first movies I've seen in a long time that even though it has elements of horror that I don't think pull it out of the thriller realm just quite enough, this movie has moments in it that I think have made me more uncomfortable and creeped out than a lot of horror movies I've seen recently. Interesting. I um, kind of almost had the exact opposite experience. Like, I do definitely agree that this movie that this movie was overhyped a little bit. I also think that hype can straight up ruin an otherwise decent movie. Yes. Because if something yes. has too much hype, you walk into it having higher expectations than you would otherwise, and it can um, change the way you watch the movie. And and that is a serious problem with movies like this. Long Legs is another great example of this. I think something, uh, the opposite spectrum. I love Long Legs, though. Well, the, the uh, on the opposite side of the spectrum there, I think that the substance has almost no hype behind it and is one of the greatest body horror movies I've seen in the last 10 years. So... Hype is a weird thing, and Cuckoo had oh, a, an actual body horror yes, movie. Yes, an you actual mean? body horror movie. We really got to do that movie, but I, I'm telling you, it would be so fun to review that movie. Regardless, um, I think that this movie had a lot of hype, and it actually did it a little bit of a disservice. Now, with that being said, the acting from uh, Hunter Schaefer is great. I think that she carries the movie very well. I think that she's 100%. strong enough and her character is strong enough to carry the entire thing. The first time around, I was kind of on board with you as far as not liking her nearly as much as I probably should have or as much as the writers would have liked me to because she does make these decisions, specifically one decision toward the end um, with somebody that's trying to help her that, that bothered me a lot the first time around. The second time around, it actually didn't bother me, and I actually totally kind of understood where she was coming from because she's just trying to protect somebody she loves, and it was at the time the, only thing, the only thing that she could think to stop him from stopping her for do, from doing that. So She spends the majority of the movie talking about how much she dislikes that yes. person, not calling her the, the relation yeah, that she sure. is. Yes. Yeah. Not calling her her sister. Well, and even at one point, all, I, I even said out loud to you, I was like, you've spent the entire movie shitting on this girl and now yes. you want to save her? Just leave. Yes. Like, you have an opportunity to just leave. And that that is for sure in there. So I do see your point. And there. now, yeah. and, and, but, and even after finding out that she is not who you think she is, yeah. and now you're like, I love her. Like, so you love her as a sister or you love her more as well, in like, my dog's in a burning building and I got to get it out of there. I think it's more like... Uh, she kind of felt like, and I'm, I, I don't know, maybe I'm reading into this a little bit more than I should, but I, I, I kind of got the vibe. She was thinking like, I'm the only semi adult person in this, in this girl's life that can help at all because the parents certainly weren't going to do anything. Also, no, the I would have loved a follow up on what went on with them toward the end that would have been too. that would have been nice to like put it just too. put a little bow on that that story um but i also but i also think that the the plot is actually really fucking cool and i really dig the monsters in this movie yes i also would like to point out that we didn't get any answers to the monster i'm okay with that 
I actually think that it's a benefit for this movie, them not over explaining at the end and sort of letting your imagination run wild with what the fuck it is. Now, I don't know if this movie did well enough to ever get a sequel, but if they put a sequel out, that will probably be ruined. And I really, really dig the monsters and I liked the decision to not tell me everything about them or even show them. There's definitely some loopholes and, and loose ends that are not tied up, but overall, I really enjoyed I it. I need to know what the deal is with the flute. Well, I mean, I think the flute is just the way that he designed to sort of, you know, I know control them. I know, but but there's not. It's, it's very like so, thrown in there with zero explanation. Yeah, <laughs> so it does it's feel a little a, like it's just like oh, creepy flute German. Yeah, he just sort of plays a flute, and everybody just kind of accepts it. <laughs> yeah, he even like, plays it like weird. on the. He even plays it like on the patio yeah. of the main family. And they're just like, oh, yeah. Well, and so he's I mean, he's calling the monsters when he does that, obviously. And he's controlling them because when we see later the little girl in the pajamas, he's literally he literally stops her from impregnating. Uh, what's what's her name in this? I forgot her name. Uh, Gretchen. Alma? Gretchen. She oh. he literally stops the pajama oh, girl from oh, impregnating okay, yeah. Gretchen with the flute. Uh, so the flute is definitely a control device, but the big, the big question I had, and we're, I think going to move into spoilers a little bit here. We both really enjoyed BPS, this, by the way, uh, what bird people semen. We both really enjoyed this for the most part, I think. And we would both suggest watching it if you are into thrillers yeah. and horror movies. Yeah. Um, otherwise I would say that maybe this isn't for everybody because, how they don't wrap everything up. And I would say that more for the mainstream audience than the horror audience, because I think the horror audience is more willing to accept something like that. But yeah. I, the thing I want to talk about here is the big question I had, which I did finally figure out the answer, but the big question I had was that they maybe should have expanded on a little bit more is why is the mother quote unquote attacking Hunter Schaefer so much or Gretchen? Uh, that was the big question I had throughout the entire movie. And uh, what's the guy's name? Um, Herr Koenig or whatever the fuck his name is. The, the, the Her, villain. Um, Krieg. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, he's, he, he, he's a coffee maker. He, ba <laughs> he basically has this throwaway line of like, you're competing for resources and the mother doesn't yeah. like that. And that is the only explanation we get for why the mom is so mad at Gretchen and wants to kill her. The other side of that, I suppose, would be the flute. He's sort of controlling the mother to kill her. But but also, like, why is he so pissed off? Because Gretchen wasn't supposed to be there. But like, you know, the whole thing just uh, feels kind of loose and not like very well put together or conceived. So it's like this kind of congealed, like, take our to just take this world as we're presenting it to you and try not to think about it too much. That's the problem his that response, this movie has. His response to her, why me, is what I was thinking through the majority of this movie when she goes, why me? And he goes, it's not about you, you little brat. Yeah. And I'm just like, thank you. You're a monster, <laughs> but thank you. Because it's just like, it, it, it is this whole, like, she does have the, I, I understand she just lost her mom. She's dealing with a lot of stuff. Yeah. She's 17. I get it. But it's just this like teen angst that I guess just like as I've gotten older, I you hated been every movie that has teenagers. This is the thing you complain I do. about every movie. I do. <laughs> I do. Um, because you all have no idea the disappointments that life has to hold for you. And so, but that's, that's kind of like, the That's why you hate thing. them because they haven't been beaten down by the world yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that says so much more about you <laughs> than it does them, though. I'm not <laughs> trying to justify my actions, okay. opinions, no, or fair. point of view. I mean, I'm you know, no, I'm not trying to justify that. But no, um, in all seriousness, the the teen angst thing is a thing that I often find myself going, get the fuck over it. 
which I also acknowledge is not fair, by the way. I do acknowledge I mean, that. that yeah. However, my natural reaction is irritability. Well, I think it's a little I, bit easier when, when to when feel for Gretchen in this movie, though, because of her situation. She's been right. within the last few months. We don't know how long exactly because they never say, but within the last few months, she's lost her mother. She's had to move in with her estranged father, not only with her with her dad, but with a family she's not really a part of and halfway around the world in Germany where she's not even she's never even been to. So there's a lot yeah. going on with her. Oh so, my I, God. I, so I think it's actually I, what my head hurts. I just, I just, I never thought I'd see the day when you were more empathetic than I was. I'm just, I'm just saying like, there's, there's a lot going on with her to be able to, yeah. I think maybe empathize with her enough to understand the sure. decisions that she's making. Now, the thing that I was sure. talking about earlier that we both had a massive problem with where Gretchen stabs, um, Henry, Air, uh, he Henry, his name is Henry. I'm looking at it on okay. the, uh, the thing here. It's this guy, right? Yeah. This guy. Yeah. It's that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Henry. When she stabs Henry, we both were kind of like, dude, what the fuck? He's the only one trying to help you. And she just, she stabs him twice too. Like it's yeah. not just once. She stabs him twice. But when I thought about it, and especially when we watched it the second time around, I was thinking more about her thought process and why she would be doing the things that she's doing, which is, which comes around to me maybe being a little more empathetic on this movie specifically, because that's literally what I was trying to do. Um, and she is only concerned about her sister, regardless of how she's felt about her sister the entire rest of the movie. That's that's the big thing that is like a massive issue in this movie. She spends if she at the beginning of this movie felt some sort of guardianship or or had to protect her from something or had right. some deep relationship with the little sister that would justify her sticking around at the end of the movie when all the shit goes down to try to save her, then I feel like I wouldn't have nearly as much of a problem with the ending that I that I do. So does that make sense? Because so, I, I just oh, don't. No, it totally makes. OK, so so it totally makes sense. And I'm going to use a personal example so i have a cousin named that's his real name if this movie were with those roles and i found out all this about i'd be like bye <laughs> even if was eight it's been a piece of shit <laughs> since he could speak <laughs> I get all of that, but, but when you find out, I feel like if you find out that the little sister may not be your biological little sister, but you thinking maybe you're the only person that can get her out of this situation because the parents are not going to do it. The doctor does not have her best interest in mind because all he wants to do is keep these, these creatures living and keep producing more and more creatures. So she's going to end up being a mother herself. She, uh, okay. Gretchen is the only okay. person in the world that can save that little girl from the, from sure. Alternatively. Uh huh. I say you leave. You bury the guilt down with drugs and alcohol and just constantly remind yourself that she's not your sister. That is the direction you could go, I guess. Yeah. That is, <laughs> I mean, if, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you don't mind lifetimes of regret, I guess that that would probably be fine. Well, I have that already, so I don't need another regret. thing on top of that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm drinking a beer at this exact moment. <laughs> All right. Well, On I mean, Sunday, that was kind of it's the that, Lord's Day. To be honest, that's really the only issue I have with this movie overall. I think that this is a very well made movie. It's yes. the dude, the camera work yes. is incredible. The lighting really is good. fucking awesome. There are yeah. moments where they're shooting at sunset and it's just these. We found out that this is shot on film, so it has this really beautiful, grainy like organic look to it. And on top of that, the lighting is all really fucking good. And, and then you put the plot is really cool. The monsters are really good. It's just those couple of things that I have a problem with. And then I have a really hard time getting past that. I just, I can't give it a higher rating because of those things, but overall it's fucking great. It just maybe was a little overhyped, but I get, I get why people yeah. would be coming out of that movie and you like know what? super stoked on it. 
we I, it's something I want to clarify is the movie being overhyped is not the movie's fault. No, not at all. Not at um, all. And, and I feel like that goes without saying, but there's a lot of dumb fucking people out there. And I feel like we have to clarify that. But I will say this. Stop putting the reviews in the fucking trailers. Stop doing that. Because that is a big part of why this was so overhyped. I have a feeling that if people went out and they saw the trailer and they didn't see, and if you've seen the trailer, you know what I'm talking about. Every five seconds, it's rave review, rave review, rave review. And if you would just fucking not do that, one or two is fine. One or two is fine. But when you're putting all these different reviews, and I get the point. You want to drive home the fact that people loved your movie. I get that. But it just, it it, it kicks off the overhype. And then Look, people just this, take we, it and run we with We talked it. about this a little bit when we reviewed Long Legs, which, by the way, is uh, linked down below and up top on the left here if you're watching the video. Um, do you remember, we, we talked about this on Long Legs, where somebody called Long Legs the scariest movie of the last, like, 10 or 20 years or whatever it was. Yeah. It wasn't and the we scariest about, movie since I was a child. No, it, I didn't even think it was scary at all. There was not no. a scary moment in that it, other than at the very beginning when that cop gets shot in the face I'm only because starting, it takes you so off guard. I'm starting to think that people <laughs> don't know what horror is. Well, um, that's the thing, right? It's This is not a horror movie. And I wouldn't even say no. Long Legs is a fucking horror movie. And that's no. maybe, maybe... Part of it is just the marketing and they're they're both using red. Red is a classic horror movie color. The marketing looks all super gritty and dark and creepy. So maybe it's just a marketing thing that like the marketing departments of neon just don't know how to market their own fucking movies. Um, These are both neon it, movies it, and they both have very, the same problem of a being overhyped and b not actually being scary, but pretending that they're pretending that they are. Oh, so God, we're going to we're going to find out in, in a year that this is all part of movie review movie review gate. Um, <laughs> now, um, I think a big part of it is people are starting to confuse when you watch something that's dark and uncomfortable. People are calling it horror. That's not horror. Yeah. When you are made to be repulsed, when you're scared, when you're shocked, when you're frightened, when something is horrifying, horror. Yeah. when something is horrifying, it's a horror movie. When well, and something, in Long Legs, when, what Long Legs does is, is horrifying, eh, but it's not a yeah, horror movie. Nah. <laughs> no, what one character does is horrifying. What the movie does is thrilling. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, why don't we go ahead and move on to ratings? I feel like uh, that's kind of all I had to say about this. You got anything else you want to talk about before we rate these? No. Or rate this? No, because I don't want to give away too much. It's it, it's new. Um, yeah. It's even though it is overhyped. Um, I definitely go. You know, give these people your money, man. We watched it on Amazon Prime, but we still rented it. Well, yeah. I rented it <laughs> twice. Twice. I can own it right now. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Um, but I will not. Will not <laughs> own a movie on digital. No, this this is I do feel like a good buy on on Blu-ray. Maybe not. This might not be a 4K pickup, but I feel like this is this would be a good one to own on Blu-ray. So okay, why don't you give me your um, final thoughts and ratings on Cuckoo? Uh, yeah, Cuckoo overall, I gotta say, you you, you go into it with an open mind. Uh, you watch the trailers. If you let the trailer and not the just abundance of fucking reviews on the fucking screen. I don't, I don't remember that many, but I wasn't paying attention. I do. So. I do. That would, that's not a um, thing that bothers me. So I, I, w I wasn't like hyper focused on it when I was watching it. Well, you know, it really doesn't bother me, but when it impacts the expectations, that fucking bothers me. That's fair. Um, I think that's fair. Because I feel like if you, I went into this not having seen any reviews, I generally do not read reviews before I see them. Me I don't either. even look up if IMDb. We're gonna, if we're going to review a movie, I don't, I try to look as little into it as possible and with this one unfortunately most of the good shit was in the trailers but when i'm sitting in front of an 80 foot by 40 foot tall screen and the movie reviews are on there i can't fucking help but read them yeah but my point is go into it with an open mind 
completely neglect every movie review, except the one that you've seen here on From the Deep, and go into this movie very, very open-minded, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Go into it realizing this is not what we would at least consider horror. Um, however, it has some very, very creative moments in here that definitely live in the realm of horror. So with all of that said, I'm going to give Cuckoo a seven out of 10. Wow. That's higher than I, uh, I mean, I guess you did say six wasn't high enough. What did you rate it on Letterboxd the first time? Six? Six out of 10. I yeah. gave it a six out of 10. Okay. Or three um, out of five. Yeah, or three out of five. We we go by tens here. Um, yeah, so it's better like that. I, I well, I think it's just a better system. It gives you more room to put stuff. Yeah. Um, whoa, 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 what am I doing over here with the decimal system? Come on. Fucking I'm so yuck. Sorry. Fucking <laughs> yuck. All right, Never jump. Well, for me, uh, I thought this was really fun. I, I The second time around, I liked it more. The first time, I was expecting this to be a little bit more high-minded and avant-garde and art house and, like, just pretentious. And Ugh, that's what yeah. I was expecting out of this because the, the trailer sort of made it seem like an art house, avant-garde-style horror movie. That's not that's what, what this every is. every film but, shooter thinks they are. Well, yeah. Amen to that. Uh, and how many actual... <laughs> <laughs> yeah how many uh auteurs do we actually have versus how many auteurs do we uh think we have um so i don't know i thought this or, was really fun I this like to call them idiot savants <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i really enjoyed this movie i i it is not what i thought it was going to be going into it that it's not its own fault again this was overhyped again not its fault it's all about the expectations you have going into this thing. And the less you know about this movie, the better going into it. Now that we've seen it twice, I have a stronger totally. sense of what this movie is about. It holds up on a rewatch for sure. I think it's better on a rewatch because like Brett said earlier, you can catch all of these little things here and there that are not super obvious the first time around when you don't know what's coming. Um, now, with that being said, it's not nearly as deep as I was hoping it was going to be. It is no. kind of shallow compared to what I was expecting it to be. This is, I, I think, had it been an avant-garde, like Mandy style, like just I insane, like assault on the senses, I think it, it would have maybe done it a little bit of good. Uh, and I don't say that a whole lot because a lot of movies like Infinity Pool try to do that and it doesn't, it doesn't work necessarily the way they want it to. Um, but with this, I feel like some, some pretentious shit might have actually lifted this up a little bit. The first time around on Letterboxd, I also rated this as a six, but I am also going to be rating this as a seven. I can't go any higher than that. I just, I can't. It's no. got problems. Um, and some of the, some of the script, the dialogue is a little wonky. Some of the ideas are not as well-rounded and thought out as I think maybe they, the, the writer thought it, that it was. Um, and the monsters are something I would like to see them move into a different, uh, into a different movie in a sequel or a prequel or whatever we need to see. I would like to see more of them. Uh, but as for right now, I'm glad they didn't show any of that to us and it's open for you know your imagination to kind of run wild with so i think it's i think it's decent and if you're into horror or th like thrillers you're gonna be into this but it's not for everybody no so um, and yeah i i, I you know you, you actually just touched on something i really um I, I really like about this movie um this is very much about the experience of the main actors the main characters um and not about the monsters yeah, um, that's, a, which that's can be, interesting. Yeah, which can be a really hard line to toe. Um, but, but I think that's what makes it a thriller instead of a horror movie. Because if yeah, we were focused yeah. more on what the, the monsters were doing, yeah. then it would be yeah, a, probably a, a horror movie. But instead, we're focused on her experience going through the situation. This so I just have this image of the monsters going back to the forest and just like eating bird eggs. <laughs> Well, if you like this, make sure you hit the like button. If you really liked it, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we got a lot more content like this on the channel and coming in the future. Thank you so much for watching. If you got all the way to the end of this with this, this is, uh, you know, 
we make these podcasts for people that get all the way to the end of them. So we really, really appreciate it if you did get all the way to this. So thank you. And we will see you guys next time from the deep. Bye-bye. I love you.